Hello everyone, welcome back to Train Sim World 2. But well, we are doing the Divergent scenario here on the Cathcart Lines DLC. So, good afternoon. An incident occurred earlier this afternoon which resulted in a failed train at Cathcart. We've been assigned to operate the replacement service at Newton. To begin, we prepare this train for service. So, we were just running through setup procedure. And here you assume we have some issues. We are in immersive mode, but for some reason my controller wasn't reacting at all. So for these start bits there is a bit of an issue with the controller. I actually go into settings. Make sure the stop marker is switched off. That is one of the most annoying things I find. Every time you start a new route, it turns that marker back on. And I even found after I did the introductory tutorial, I guess you'd call it. Yeah, tutorial. In the video you'll have seen yesterday, slash last night, release day. Um, even after that, it still put that stop marker back on. Damn. Buttons. So far. Anyway, we get the train underway. And... Get the train underway. He says, yes. Yeah. So the controller was still having issues at this point. I had to actually manually disconnect the cable and plug it back in. I use a wired Xbox One controller. I used to use wireless a very long time ago, but I had so many issues with controller creep. But it just kind of did my head. Now you see it's working. And see there. That problem I have in immersive mode where it jack the throttle up and it throws us into the windscreen because zoom and throttle increase are both on right trigger for some reason anyone knows why let me know yes so we are in a british rail class 314 in scott rail saltire livery doesn't have any Branding, which I don't mind personally. Because, you know, the operator branding bit, first group, East Midlands trains or whatever, it detracts from the main livery for me. I'm not bothered if it's not there. Virgin, they have a big thing about copyright, but that's this livery works better as it is my personal opinion so anyway yeah the class 314 were riding on they were originally built in 1979 the iron ac electric multiple unit as you can tell we're running under the wires here and there was a whole bunch of similar units these been we're in the 314 the 313 vastly similar 315 and then there was the 507 508 which i believe is used on mersey rail of course 500 series denotes that they were third or fourth rail to get the power from the ground of course these don't these are just ordinary overhead routinery yeah Pretty much lived the whole life up in Scotland, running a three unit configuration, which is what we have here today. And yeah, the unpowered central car, two powered driving units. And you will see out and about at some point that. They did sometimes 
run in double, so six car formation, two units coupled together. You'll see that on here, and basically that's how they dealt with rush hour services. So here we are on Cathcart Circle Line. It did also run the Argyle Line, North Clyde Line, Paisley Canal Line, and the Inverclyde Line, which isn't modelled here. So, yeah, the death of these units is, like a lot of older multiple units, is they don't didn't meet tech spec for disability rules that were coming in, um, reduced mobility, and fortunately, not that easy to just come in and say, oh yeah, we'll just do this, and then people in wheelchairs or People who are otherwise less able physically, you, it's easier to build new units to accommodate those than to retrofit sometimes. And so that's kind of why these units went away. That and the fact that, as I mentioned at the start, 1979 these came in, so they had a very good long life. Of course, you have the newer units such as the 380s that run along here now in real life. So, I've just noticed that I don't actually sound. Um, sound when I was recording I do apologize for this um this is a kind of 70 minute service so I don't really want to rerun it I will have to have a look at, into the sounds and the irony is it sounds not too bad in this DLC um some people have highlighted issues they know the trains better than I do and they know what they're listening to for me sound levels seem fine not being an expert on these certainly much better much louder than a lot of other things okay see me I press the signal bell we're not getting signal bell sound so I do apologize for lack of sound on this one Let's board the actual route itself. Um, so, Cathcart Circle lines, the lines, because it is actually more of a small series of lines, and you do get more than the main Cathcart Circle with this route. So, it's mostly suburban route. Here we've got some houses here, even though we're on the outer reaches of the network, we started at Newton. And yes, yeah, so main Cathcart circle is there's a circular line out of Glasgow Central, puts a loop and goes back in. And then there's further branches down to Newton where we've started today and to Neilston. It tells me here on the south bank the river Clyde. I'm trying to think if I noticed the river being there. I'm sure it is. But hey, hey. One thing I will mention here is there was a bit of delay getting started, I will admit, because of me playing around with the controls, getting things up and so on. But this route 
suffers from same as pretty much all Crimson World routes in that timings are crazy tight. You'll see by the end of this, we fall so far behind. There, nearly a minute and a half behind as we stop at this station. And, you know, maybe I'm being a little conservative on the controls. Me, you shouldn't be pulling out of the station, bang, 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 straight into fourth, which is the highest notch on this vehicle. Yeah, for me, you shouldn't be doing that, shouldn't have to do that. But I think the timings programmed and worked out based on train accelerating the maximum and then decelerating to the maximum as well. So basically you're getting optimal speed out of it, regardless of what the passengers are doing. They're bouncing about like peas in a frying pan, but yeah, the timing they definitely could do with tweaking that moving forward. Maybe even if they put no oh, three percent margin in or oh, five percent even. Someone has pointed out on one of the other routes that the timings are tighter than in real life. I think it was the Rosalini and said, look, this is what the actual timetable should be. Now, bearing in mind that particular route is developed by Rivet Games, but still it uses Princeton World architecture. It uses their version of the Unreal Engine, so it translates into being a Princeton World issue rather than that. But yeah, the in real world, you don't meet those timings that the game portrays. And here you see, look, a minute and a half behind. And sometimes I drop even further than that. I never managed to make up that time. I mean, being really aggressive sometimes, I can keep to that gap, but I can never kind of make up the time. Anyway, going back to the line here, um, trying to find relevant information you guys say so. yeah um this route one said it was based around 2014 but the scenarios are certainly dated 2017 so i would argue you know, logically that this is based in 2017 but Basic service should be train every 30 minutes from Glasgow Central to Neilston via Mount Florida and every hour from Glasgow Central to Newton again via Mount Florida, Glasgow Central to Newton via Maxwell Park and in or out a circle service. So that's both directions around the circle. Um, peak times the above services combined to have trains run approximately every five to ten minutes between Glasgow Central and Cathcart, where line capacity permits. Unfortunately, you don't get the feeling that that is replicated in this route. That right there, interrupting myself, kept getting. All throughout this, that momentary lapse where 
the FPS wasn't affected, but textures all seem to blur and then go clear again. And there is another thing I noticed, which I'll be able to show you later on in the external view when we go to that, is route destination on the front of the train is blurred out and I know that's not an actual thing because I've seen other people haven't had that issue and if we stay on it for long enough it gradually clears itself so I think there is some issue with the settings I'm running and I'm running on the ultra preset and maybe I need to turn some things down my mind should mainly affect my frame rate if that's the issue um, maybe it's the recording side of it is taking some away. I'm not sure, but yeah, I did notice there was that kind of intermittent issue with the graphics. Temporarily blurring and then going straight again. As for the route in general, though, scenically, during the day, it's very, very good. You may have seen in my video last night where I went to 9.30 p.m. and took a look around and yeah, Glasgow looked amazing at that time and I thought oh, well, maybe people are overreacting with how dark it is. I then watched someone on a live stream. I do apologise to streamer in question because I can't remember who it was now. Certainly someone I hadn't watched before and I was having a look and they were running at night and you couldn't see a thing. It really highlighted how much these trains need light. And I mentioned this in the chat and someone, both the streamer and someone else said, yeah, well, it's like that in real life. Lights are on trains, certainly the older trains, for other people to see the train, not for the lights to light up scenery. And yeah, for the most part, that's true, but there should be some light emitting from them. Like if we're this close from these catenary poles, from sort of 10, 20 yards away, there should be some light hitting that and being reflected off. Coming up to this 20 sign here, you should see that 20 sign as you get to it. It shouldn't be pitch black. Absolutely shouldn't. And the streamer actually unwittingly highlighted that himself by switching over and... Oh, look at that compression. That's not good. Certainly, I didn't see it that rough in the game. So I think that is down to recording. But yeah, he unwittingly showed off the lights because he took an engineering run with the Class 66. And that showed exactly what the lights on the front of the train should be doing. I'd argue they probably should have still been a little bit brighter than that but the important thing was they were light emitting forces on the lights whereas on this somebody mentioned it on the forum they're just essentially decals so they're just bright decals that look like lights but they don't, they're not actually functioning as lights. It's a shame. And it means that I will never use this route in the dark. Doesn't mean the route's completely broken for me, but run all of the services. Fortunately, that needs to be fixed, in my opinion.
up there. We're minutes behind schedule. I did notice this during, you can see the stairs there flickering. I think that is a case of my settings. So if anyone knows what's causing that and can kind of give some advice on what to change in the settings. Because I'll be honest, when it comes to setting up your graphic settings in games, I just tend to ramp it up till the FPS dies and then switch stuff off until I've got an acceptable frame rate rather than knowing exactly what each setting does that I'm playing with. Like I know what um, render distance is, so that's how far ahead. Scenery is popping up. And that for me always has to be quite high. I can deal with having less detail overall in the route long as I've not got scenic items popping in right ahead of me. That just, that for me is a big, no, no, that's not enjoyable if. So here and now, you can see the scenery poles are gradually coming to life. If they were just not there one second and then pop right in front of us. That's a good sight for me. And you know, different people, their mileage will vary. And we'll say, well, you know, I'd rather have that than not being able to play the game at all, which, yeah, okay. Granted, I agree with that. You want the empty collect boards there on our right hand side, a route map? Incidentally, I have gone through on but throughout this whole route I did skip from some stations to others at other times I walked the route and I'm missing two posters three route markers and three newspaper stands and I visited every location so Curious where those eight items are that I've missed. Now, someone did say in the aforementioned stream that I was watching last night, oh yeah, I found all of the collectibles. Possible they have. But I'd like to know where these missing ones are. And I've walked up and down. Glasgow Central Station a couple of times all around and each station I've visited I've gone both platforms front to back and depot that's also featured I've walked the full length of that so I'm curious where these extra collectibles be I mean it's not essential what I most likely do is if I haven't found them in a couple of weeks, I'll go and follow a guide and go through them all just so my own mind. Oh, yeah, I found them all. The achievements, I think. Not an achievement hunter per se in games, but like it's not essential to me that I get all achievements. In Transport Fever 2, for example, which I have a lot of videos here on my channel of. Don't have hardly any achievements for that game. Mostly because I do modded gameplay, which precludes getting any achievements. But to me, they're just not important enough personally that I felt the need to go through the game to get them all. Some people it's very important 
to and they have to play a game in full to get said achievements and you know that's fine if that works for them then all power to them you know there's no right or wrong way to play any game I feel unless it game where a shooting game there's definitely wrong ways to play a shooting game if you keep dying all the time but for the most part I think there's very few games where you can say right it's got to be played in this way and even Trains in World 2 here you're not forced to run through all the scenarios you're not forced to go find all the collectibles. Heck, if you just want to sit around in train spot all day and ride the trains, technically there's nothing to stop you from doing that. I would argue that you probably want something that's a bit more full, a bit more traffic around, which rush hour is supposed to be delivering. Now, whether that will just be on the routes that are included with rush hour and subsequent routes or whether they will backdate it to these, who knows? I'd like to think that the lack of trains at the moment is some kind of performance barrier that they're working to overcome. And so with that, they'll be able to go through backdate routes with more traffic in. There's a lot of stuff we don't know about rush hour as of yet though. So I'm not gonna focus too much on that. And give it a quick mention, it is coming up later in the year. And I potentially will be getting it. I'm not going to say I'm percent that I'm getting it, and I'll be honest, I was 100% on getting Cane Creek, which is the next DLC, which is Union Pacific's in Utah, the screenshots that have been shared look amazing. But for me, I'd like to see a hotfix come out for this for the light. So they acknowledge that that is an issue. It should be a really easy fix. I and mean, it's not as if the lights aren't modelled. The controls are all there. So and so forth. It's just the lights themselves don't actually work as lights. Like you can see there, there's no emission of lights there. At all. And some people have mentioned that you know the station lights should be so much brighter as well. Yeah, no, I tend to agree. Now the excuse we've been given is that the game can't tell the difference between day and night and I'm thinking well, how do you manage to incorporate a day and night cycle that the game can't tell if it's day or night so that's why they're not doing it because they say if they make bright lights at night they'll also be present during the day Even if all that's true, that doesn't um there you see I accidentally been out of cab, press the wrong button, open the wrong doors. But yeah, you can see if you actually look at the headlights that they just don't look like real lights, they don't operate like real lights. Yeah. 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 
know, that train passing us there in the tunnel. We can have sunlight reflecting off of one coach onto coach of the opposing train. In that, then there's no reason why there shouldn't be any light coming from the headlights on this train. I don't care if it is old technology, if they're old filament bulbs. But anyway, I keep going on about the headlights. I need to fill up about that. And that's interesting now. We have two trains close together. That is the closest you get to busy on this route. And I'm not actually sure why there were two trains so close together like that, because you don't see any trains hardly for the rest of the route. Red signal up ahead. Here it does need a bit of concentration. You go down to a 50 and then you go down to a 40 here. Luckily you should actually be slowing for this station ahead anyway. You should be aware. So there's no glaring errors on this route with speed last minute speed reductions like you get on Long Island Railroad which some people are pulling parallels between this and Long Island Railroad in that, you know, suburban routes that just feel too quiet and I have to say I thought with Long Island Railroad the M3 DLC would change that some feel busier like I thought what they'd do is there'd be additional services added to the timetable because of the M3 and unfortunately it seems like either route was completely dead before or the M3 has just replaced some of the services that the M7 had I think this was the instance where I pressed to lock the doors and didn't really lock. Oh no, I do apologise that was later on. So, yeah, here's where our train finishes. So you see me go and change the lights over and then realise that we've actually got to go up Newton Turn back side in and burst out onto the other platform. We do pass red here, but of course we do have shunt signal there, which sends us on to this side end. Interesting, there is no five mile per hour speed limit line here is probably accurate to real life but worth noting if you do try and take on this route without the HUD get to these points here it is five mile an hour trying to keep the train at five mile an hour well, that's struggling itself. You have to keep dancing with the throttle. And yeah, here is where I feel we did lose even more time because I don't think the 
timetable allows for how long it takes to crawl in here, switch everything off, run down to the other end of the train, activate everything and pull out. As far as the AI is concerned, you can just click your fingers, you're at the other end of the train. And off you go. Of course, isn't the case. You have got to physically make your way to the other cab. It's a shame that the game doesn't sort of recognize that. Yeah, you can see here with the speed really crawling in. Yeah. Brakes on. We need to stop. The interesting thing to note here is put the train in step three on the brakes and then shut down. Jump up. Walk. Through the doors. Was take the time to shut the doors after me. Uh, need to the cab at least. Realistically, it probably wouldn't that much. Setting the train up. Get to the brakes. Ah. Already released. Uh, yeah. A little bit of a pick up there, and it doesn't really make that much difference. But little things like that that you go, hmm, okay, surely that should be set. Little shunt signal there, our way back out. Yeah, this roll here is where we really lose a lot of time. As I say, I don't think it's a fact of rolling into this head shunt back out but the problem. I think it's the game doesn't allow us time to shut down all the system, walk to the other end, switch everything on again. I think it program to take that as genius move on and I do apologize for I'll be honest, had I more time to record, I would have gone and recorded this again. Right in now. Rear of our train is out. In away. In again, I think the game you know in Accelerate up to 40 there. Either way, pull in three minutes. 
find. No matter what I do, we will not recover that time. With that being said, I suppose it depends how important it is to you whether you're running on time or not, whether you really care about the final scores. On. I mean, I'd be interested to see if someone else runs this particular scenario. You can pop down in the comments time you get. Or you get sorry rather than time. Yeah, let me know the score you get for this route. See who can get the highest. I will probably go and run this again off screen at some point. There are a few other things I want to do first. So, and there's still a whole bunch of routes that I haven't played yet that I own that I want to go have a look at. With that being said, um, I do have a video recorded on the Isle of Wight line. A bit of overspeed there. What I was. Yeah. Take that. Take there. But I do get penalised for it there. Yeah, I do have a video on the Isle of Wight line already recorded. It just needs a voiceover. And I've been sat on that for over a week. Probably will re record that though. Not that there's anything wrong other than the fact I cannot keep anywhere close to time on that. Um, I think the next one is going to be possibly one of the DLCs for Caltrain route which is the MP15 DC, I think it is. Anyway, it's a shunting engine and yeah, for it is M15. Yeah, so we'll be doing some shunting with that sometime soon. Unfortunately, videos won't keep on out regularly as they are right now. Some of you will know I've had a couple of days off for my 39th birthday. And so yeah, that has afforded me time to do recordings such as this. And it nicely coincided with this route being released, so that was a bonus. But do get the Cane Creek DLC I can't guarantee I'll have anything up the same day. Largely because Thursdays is the day they release stuff and it's also the day that I'm normally shopping. Whilst what I could do is come home, do the shopping, whilst the game downloads, and then come and record. By the time you've got that video uploaded YouTube it is going to be rather late so we'll see a lot depends on if I buy the route on release day and I might actually get home from shopping I still need to eat it as well so yeah a couple of those things together we'll just see how it goes Here we go, pulling 314206 out. Train's not all that full when the amount of people that are on platforms. Here is 
where you can see scenery helps throwing us about the root indicator existent very blurry gradually comes in and we can see we're headed for Glasgow Central eventually and then it goes again I have no idea why that is I have to say watching it that is a localized problem with my settings slash system rather than an issue with root itself so if you're watching this video and want to get as much viewing as I can before I buy it, bear that in mind that that is not something that's a fault with the DLC itself. As far as graphically glow, as far as graphically goes I can honestly say the only thing I can fault is the light everything else but on and when I was going for my walk around looking for collectibles I couldn't find any of the usual penury floating um, big holes under the ballast that you sometimes get on other routes none of that and that should be highlighted that should be applauded to dovetail for making sure that things like that are correct in this now we'd all like everything to be perfect but you know as long as dovetail are learning and improving and yeah some things could be fixed a bit quicker some things you look at and you think how did that get through QA and rightfully you question do they even have QA or is it just the artwork guys as they're going through going hmm. yeah I see that myself I'll fix that you get what I mean it doesn't seem like sometimes there is any external QA done and feedback back and forth and things fixed for release and that's not to say that I could do any better because I'm not a games developer and Honestly, I wouldn't know where to begin to do all this kind of stuff. I make some routes on Inky, I make some routes on Transport Fever. Transport Fever in particular, I try and make them look pretty, but that's just using the tools that other people give me. Were I to go and try and make a game myself, I'd probably crap myself and, yeah, what comes out would be a garbled mess but you know the flip side of that coin is these are professionals they are paid to do the job oh, hey got a little bit more traffic there hey, yeah arguably we should expect better from them and the argument of if you don't like it if you think you can do better go do it yourself it's yeah it bugs me when people say that yeah, oh let's see you do better well I don't have to that's not my job that's the job of the person who's creating this stuff yeah Like I say though, on this route, I can't really fault much, technically. 
I mean, most of the issues I know is localized to me and I need to play with my own settings to get rid of dead issues. The route itself is very nice. Brings us to would I recommend people buy it? They fix the lighting, make stations a bit brighter, make the headlights work. Absolutely, without a doubt. If they don't, personally, I'd say hold on for a little while, wait till it's in a sale, then scoop it up. Because you can play this route and you can enjoy it during daylight hours, like now. Cannot fault it. And majority of the time, the lighting is fine. Work it. I mean, heck, I took a run in the snow on the rail tour in winter, and you know, the game didn't crap itself on ultra settings. It still functioned, it still ran. And yeah, me doing crazy things with the camera spinning around, so on. I couldn't get the FPS to die. And you know, that was an issue early on when this game was released. When Heavy Hall first hit the virtual shells performance was a big issue. I don't really say that anymore. They have worked on that. Performance isn't bad. And now they've just got to back that up with kind of giving us a bit more traffic. I think that's what a lot of people who won't buy this right now have issue with is the route too quiet. It doesn't convey the feeling of a busy urban environment. And I kind of get that. I can't argue with people and say, no, it's not. You know, not it vibrant it's full it isn't um we've hit the odd yellow um we did have a red at one point which cleared as soon as we'd finished at the station so i don't think that was traffic related but for the most part yeah it's rather quiet but it doesn't mean that you can't enjoy the route. Bit of overspeed there as we end this. Dropping down now. Loop under line and make our way back up to Glasgow Central. Personally, I cannot wait until people start playing around with delivery editor and scenario editor. I personally can't because I've got AMD components and Although there is a workaround, you can force the game to use Vulkan rather than DX12. It's... I'm not sure I want to go into the effort involved there. But basically at the moment, combination of my GPU and CPU, and if I go into the livery editor, it just crashes straight out. Other people have managed to create stuff and it just doesn't show up in game. 
but I can't wait to see videos where people have thrown in HSTs into Glasgow Central, even if it's just AI services running down to the edge of the map, as far as you can, West, West Coast Mainline. And, you know, 47s hauling coaches, they've got the EVL. And how good would Scott Rail class 47 and Mark 3s, Mark 2s look? Yes. Looking soon, Scott Rail 37s while we're at it. You know, you could artificially make this look great. I mean, okay, those deliveries are not compatible with this, let's be clear. You know, the trains I'm talking about are from the 80s. But I'm sure at some point someone's going to do it and it's going to look epic. You know, they might even backdate delivery on the 314 to match that era. And you know, if Dovetail are listening, you could always do that. You know? Let's have a DLC pack that allows us to replicate an earlier era of this route. Now, the only issue with that, obviously, is if you don't already own the routes at those are in then all good and well if you buy a DLC pack if you do and all you're getting is some free liveries and some AI trains using those then yeah you're going to feel a little bit stung You know, this is just my hypothetical rambling here. I'm not saying Dovetail are going to do that. I know they have released DLC or other routes using other arc. That's not to say they can do it here. So anyway, timing-wise, it should be there. Still three and a half minutes behind schedule and we're not actually that far away now from Glasgow ah yes this is the station one doors was Making our way up to Queen's Park now. Yeah, just coming up to the hour mark on this now, so not too much longer. Those of you that have actually stuck through my ramblings to this point. Narrating videos isn't my strong point. Um, normal everyday life. I'm not a very vocal person. I am much better at sitting back, listening to other people talk and responding to that rather than being a big talker myself. Here, yeah. you can see as we get closer and closer, the centre of Glasgow stations are much closer together. Coming into Queen's Park now, which just leaves Pollock Shields east to go before we go back into Glasgow Central. Enough. Moment. 
They're brilliant, they are. They're blue barrel trains. Which of course are a collectible, you fill those up with flowers. I have managed to find all 25 of those. Now, I am planning eventually to a lot more time with this route and I'd like to try and do a run through it at some point with the AWS switch done, with the HUD removed, or as much of the HUD as I can get away with, kind of run down here, reacting to speed, various mile markers, lights you can see ahead like here see there's the yellow we already know from the hud that the next light is a red just see it on the right hand side okay view far end of the station so again not really a concern for us because we're stopping here anyway. But it would be nice kind of occasionally running for instances we have got to stop, wait for the trains. Around here. Plus, when we came out on a different run, we actually use these lines in the middle here. This has the weather we track to the left at any point. That goes down to the depot, I'm not sure. And out here, a 25 limit up here. There is no chance warning for that it, route knowledge being the sign. I think this would be good route to learn. I'm gonna learn a route. This works. And my favourite route is Sun Patch Grade. Trying to learn that. My goodness, could you imagine? How long would that take? Oh. Yep. Twenty minutes later, right, speed change. And try and take visual cues in all credit to the real life drivers along that route to know it as well as they do and be able to slow down in advance of speed changes. I certainly don't want to learn it anytime soon. I mean I'd love to but my ability to is hampered by the amount of time available. Right, rolling up now. I do love how we've got route indicators on. Go central ahead, we've got a double train passing by us here on the right hand side. Here's a 20 here. 
anyone who misses 15 mile an hour needs their wrist slapped. Or the fact that that says about a 90 mile an hour come. Ninety mile an hour will be the West Coast Main Line runs into here, which you won't do in this game, unless of course you want to go and play around in scenario edit. Then I suppose you could take a run down there, but you won't go very far. Yeah, you really can't miss fifteen mile an hour limit. Right there on the gantry. Okay. Just bringing it down in time. Now I'm curious about the routing in particular platform. So you wouldn't have used the double slip further back or you'd use that crossover there rather than this one ahead. And I'm no expert so I don't know how they would actually route you in here. My thinking is just that I'd mostly want to get you onto the direct track for using it as possible. Free up the other for other traffic. I could be wrong on that. Anyway, we are coming to the end of the route now. The end of our run. You're probably Yay! God he's gonna shut up. And yes, I am very shortly. So bring the train to a stop. Pop open the doors. Very quick unload there. And good work. That is all the tasks assigned to you for this afternoon. Let's see how you did. And this worried me here. Okay, are you going to give us the end screen? Here we go. There you go, guys. Total score of 20,042 AP. Well, they don't just call it XP, I don't know. But there you go. As you can see, Patterton Platform 1, we're a minute late. Dropped to two minutes late for White's Craig. One minute for William Wood. One minute for Muir End, two for Kings Park, one for Croft Foot, then one for Burnside, one for Kirkhill, two for Newton Platform 2, and then this is where it kind of goes downhill a tiny little bit. Is suddenly, though you've got no due time for the turn back siding. By the time you come out, look, three minutes. And never recur for that. So three minutes Kirk Hill. Two minutes for Burnside. But it only kind of goes to the nearest minute. Timings. Yeah. Okay, by the time we get into Glasgow Central, two minutes down. And stopping the accuracy, not too bad. But anyway, that is going to be it for this one, guys. If you've made it this far, thank you very much for sticking with me. Um, you can share this video out if you like. And okay, that is going to be it for this one. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.